Welcome back to Hamaka Small Garden. It's very near the end of August, so it's nearly 10 weeks since we were here. A whole summer of amazing growth. We've had a warmer than usual summer here and an incredible lack of rain. So I've been watering here quite a bit. I come in with the hose mostly from the tap, the mains water, and about twice a week, or a little bit more often if we just put in new plants. The flowers have been beautiful and still are. Zinnias, for example, I do water them. I really like these flowers. They bring so much to a garden. And in fact, there, there was a dahlia last time we were here, and that was getting so big that I actually just took it out. I've got dahlias everywhere in the garden, and sometimes it's like, oh, I had to do that, because otherwise the carrots behind were really struggling, and moisture, particularly dahlias, take a lot of moisture. Here is an interesting squash plant. I must just say, by the way, we've had a problem with microphones this morning unexpectedly, just out of the blue. And I'm not mic'd up, so I'm talking a little bit louder to the phone microphone and hoping you can hear me okay. There are two squash plants here, and I expected more fruit than this. A little bit disappointed, but this one, look how impressive it is. It's not actually, <laughs> it's not attached. It's not from this plant, but because I'm puzzled what this variety is. I had a problem with labeling and we got in a muddle in the late spring. This one is called Ute, or Ute, U-T-E. It was grown by the American Indians and it, it's a really old, and I, this one weighs eight and a half kilos, that's 18 pounds. Fantastic, I'm looking forward to eating it. Uh, but maybe that's why, these plants don't give many. I, I get one fruit per plant and it, I think that's what it is. So they've still got a way to go. You can see how green the leaves are. We've got a lot of other squash plants at this time of year, which the leaves are starting to go yellow, which is a sign of upcoming maturity. This one, I think we're going to be into October, partly because they went in a bit late. We'll see. The leeks, which I had just planted at the end of the last video, so they've been in the ground for about nine weeks now. I'm really pleased they're doing nicely, but they have had regular watering. Leeks need moisture. multi sown as you can see, variety filamen. I've got two ways of growing summer brassica on display here. One is using a mesh cover and one is not. So these are savoy cabbage planted after beetroot. We had a great beetroot harvest here, about four kilos or so, nine pounds. And as soon as they were out in late June, early July, these savoy cabbage went in and they should crop all being well towards um, the uh, well in winter these can stay here <laughs> I'm hoping to be able to come out any time in the winter and harvest a nice cabbage this mesh cover though is an old one I don't I like to use them as long as possible you can see there the holes and that has allowed flea beetles to get in I know that a lot of us have had flea beetle problems and I'm looking for a leaf actually with some damage I'm not seeing too much you can see it actually on the leaves where they're touching the mesh the flea beetles can eat through the mesh and, and make these little holes that's that's flea beetle damage and as the plants get bigger the holes often enlarge like that it's not catastrophic you know it's only bad if you get really bad infestation but at times here it has been like that because we've had so much hot dry weather which is what they love and water is for me the best remedy so it, Partly it slightly washes them off, but more than anything, it makes the plants stronger so that they're of less interest to the flea beetle. They can grow away from the damage. These parsnips, though, have struggled because... Oh, I've just trodden on them. <laughs> the um, dryness, you can see how they get particularly small as we go this way in this little... That should be a big sunflower there. <laughs> Never made it. I haven't watered it, though. Uh, you know, I don't have unlimited water here. Uh, my one tap. We're managing, though. Uh, no dig is really helping no dig garden you know no dig generally is fantastic in dry weather it's also fantastic in wet weather because you it drains well it's fantastic in every aspect actually i don't know why the whole world isn't no dig what's going on here is that the neighbor's hedge is just sucking out the moisture and even the trees above so if you've got that problem there's not a lot you can do about it except you know 
if you put a lot of if i put a lot of water on here i'm also watering those hedge plants and so it feels a little bit of a waste if it was a wet summer like last year this time last year it was really wet it had been dull we were craving sunshine this year it's been exactly the opposite so you don't know in advance and sometimes you sow and plant and, and hope for the best uh, these kale actually i'm pretty surprised kale there red russian and swedes here uh, to be precise, actually, this is an interesting one called Gillfeather, which is a turnip swede from Canada. And then there's a normal swede as well. But they went in, some of these went in between onions. There were onions here last time. We had a very nice harvest, around five kilos of onions. They're now uh, ready to eat in the winter, nicely dried. Uh, so that's an example of the kind of successions you can do. Like everything here is second planting. The, the leeks followed potatoes, um, the carrots there followed <laughs> i racking my brain what was here in the spring do you know i can't remember actually i've got so much going on uh, at the moment I... yeah <laughs> anyway these carrots were sown early june and we've only recently put the mesh cover on and that's against carrot root flies so the carrot root flies don't fly in the summer you have a period of grace between about mid-june to mid-august that and you can open out your covers <laughs> and these were open until three weeks ago we put this cover on so these are winter carrots all being well variety ox heller it's some seed i sowed in fact there i put in a couple of dill so that's herbs for autumn and likewise here there's a line of three coriander plants and one of them i had to replant because this is snail city here uh, there's quite a lot of places on the edge of the garden where snails can hide and I did come out at night two or three times either late in the evening or very early in the morning and uh, well I squashed them. Uh, slugs also I found on some of the chicory plants behind and I've managed to keep on top of them this year because there aren't too many but in a wet year like last year it was very difficult so if you're having a wet time now you know these kinds of things that the problems <laughs> vary every year. And I would say the problem we've had this year is getting enough water on the plants. And that's a nice problem because if you can do it, you've got, you know, in a dry summer, you've got good light. You've got sunshine. That's what plants need. Look at these tomatoes. Just fantastic. This is the variety sun gold grown from seeds sown around the middle of March, transplanted two months later, just after the last frost date here, which is mid-May. And they've cropped heavily. I've taken off the lower leaves and empty trusses, uh, a few, quite a few kilos of fruit. And <coughs> for just bog standard cooking tomatoes, this is a variety called Dorinia from Germany. Uh, you know, you get a lot more tomatoes than you do with sun gold. Sun gold is a special burst of flavour for the mouth. And the Dorinia have been good at like for tomato sauce and that kind of thing. And I've stopped the plants. So that was around the 10th of August. Ah, oh, no, it wasn't. Sorry, it was around the 1st of August. It's, it's earlier than in the polytunnel. They're trying to grow side shoots now, so I take them out. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that all the fruit ripen before before October, really. Here, it's not warm anymore, and it's very dark in October. We're 51 degrees north. So, you know, this cropping season is quite tight, and stopping the plants means you're likely to get more ripe fruit. That was peas for seed. Now, chicory. These little strawberry plants, when we saw them last, were tiny, just gone in. And I didn't expect fruit, but actually it's a variety. I think it's been in cold storage. So it's that way you get some summer fruit from a June planting. Not big, as you can see, but actually a mouthful of amazing flavour, the variety marshmallow. And then I'm finishing. So I thought, right, I'll try an interplant of these chicory again. Uh, these are to make little hearts sometime in late, very late autumn, early winter. Uh, Treviso type. <clears throat> I'll be cutting off the runner so the strawberries gradually die back in late autumn that hopefully have nice chicory. This is perennial broadleaf sorrel, it's been here quite a few years now. <clears throat> quite a few damaged leaves but still very edible. I don't know how many of you eat sorrel, it's, it's, it's a very particular flavour, slightly lemon, slightly acid. Uh, we put it in the salad bowl mix with lettuce which is not so flavoursome and it really peps it up. Uh, we've taken about half a kilo of sorrel from that little area. This, uh, that was just in August. These these tomatoes have 
it's not a fantastic variety for a pot. But I'm just mentioning the compost. Uh, I wanted to see that they've not been fed, and it's Dalefoot tomato compost, which they claim you can grow tomato planting without feeding. And it didn't work for me last time, this time it has. A bit of a problem with compost, you can never be quite sure that it's always the same ingredients in every sack. Uh, but this year their mix has worked well. Uh, finally, the fig. <laughs> I was just checking the video we filmed in June when it was not much to see this. So, so much growth in the summer. And there are actually little figs on here, but they're not gonna have time. I'm gonna take it off actually, show you. It's too late. Uh, we don't have a hot enough late summer autumn for these to ripen. <clears throat> So there won't be any harvest here this year, but I'm gonna cut this back hard again in the winter and then really watch it, even do some summer pruning. It's clearly got a very strong root system. And then I'm looking for some fruit next summer.